I'm Carol Angela Davis coming to you on Thursday, July 7, 2011 with your news for the day coming to you via Skype. We're going to get, begin with some news. I'll just say this. Something is rotten in Denmark, as the saying goes. Uh, GOP congressional leaders continuing to take a hard line on tax hikes on the wealthy as part of any debt ceiling deal. Now, to reach the $4 trillion number that we have to reach, we're going to have to have significant revenue increases and significant changes to entitlements. Cuts in the range of $500 billion are being considered for Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Security. Obama is arguing that restoring taxes, uh, tax rates on families making more than $250,000 a year to levels from the 1990s is the best way to go. He says America at that time experienced a high rate of job growth and poverty reduction. I think that's what we're all after, job growth and poverty reduction. So why would you go against that if you really want to reduce poverty and increase jobs? Why are you protecting the wealthy when they have not it, it created a single job? If they are created jobs, all these people wouldn't be out of work. They're not creating jobs. They're taking their money and hoarding it. Obama says the higher rates of the 1990s before the Bush tax cuts were part of a stronger economy uh, than the reduced rates of the next decade, adding the tax cuts didn't work and that we should go with what works. Now, Democrats also want to end some tax loopholes and subsidies, such as government payments uh, to the oil and gas industry. Those have to stop. Now, look at your, look, pay attention. Because if you're in a district, let's say you're in a district of 100,000 people, let's say it's led by a Republican. Let's say 10,000 of those people are wealthy, 90,000 of them are not. They're poor. Some, maybe you got a few middle incomes in there. If the Republicans continue to refuse to compromise and refuse to raise the taxes, taxes on the rich, and the rich refuse to step up and claim their responsibility, then I have to ask you, do you have the right person in power? It has nothing to do with Republican or Democrat. It has to do with the fact that they're voting for a few people in their district. They're voting for the rich. And there aren't enough of them in the district to be a majority. Therefore, in your district, the majority is not ruling. One man, one vote does not count. All all that votes, all that counts is how many wealthy people are there and how much did they give to finance the campaign of that person who's in charge because they're not voting for you. So just don't get it twisted. You've got a real problem on your hands. If these Republicans don't bend, you have to ask yourself how insidious is it they are bought and sold to such an extent that they can knock back down. And that is a problem because that, has, that is not democracy. Let's move on. Former President Bill Clinton telling college students to beware. Republicans are trying to suppress the youth vote in the 2012 election. Uh, at a speech to college students at the Campus Progress National Conference, President Clinton said, former President Clinton said this, one of the most pervasive political movements going on outside Washington today is disciplined, passionate, determined effort of Republican governors and legislators to keep most of you from voting next time. Clinton says by eliminating same-day registration and making it difficult for college students to vote in the state in which they reside most of the year, which of course is where they go to school, the youth vote can be suppressed. It is a situation the former president says is like the old poll taxes and the Jim Crow laws that of course suppress the African American vote. And speaking of the office of the presidency, the question being asked by in many journalistic circles now is this. Did the election of President Barack Obama to the presidency of the United States, did it boost the growth of right-wing so-called hate groups? Isn't that sad? It's so sad. That's just nothing but straight-up racism. Hate groups, anti-black, anti-Jew, neo-Nazi are on the rise again, and apparently most people agree that the catalyst for all of this is the election of an African-American to the presidency of the United States of America. Get this from Washington State. One woman who teaches art in African-American studies has been repeatedly harassed since word got out about what she taught. She's had to move several times, and her homes have been broken into. Nooses have been left for her, and a swastika was left on her front porch. Okay, we want you to know that uh, these groups, they're hate groups, they're patriot groups, they're neo-Nazi groups, they're anti-immigrant nativist groups. These groups are tracked by the Southern Poverty Law Center. And that center's director says this, and I quote, In the fall of 2008, we started to see an explosion in hate groups, but more generally in right-wing groups of general types. And get this, the leader of one Aryan, group, Na Aryan nation group says this, quote, The day after Barack Obama's election, he says, My phone would not stop ringing. It was up to four or five a day asking for education and information. That's what this country has come to. You would rather vote. You would rather vote for somebody who is, be, be, vote against somebody because of the color of their skin, their religious affiliation, or the fact that they're an immigrant. You would rather vote against them on something superficial like that 
rather than vote some for someone who cares about your kids. Your schools are being defunded. The school lunch programs are being defunded. Your mother's going to get sick and can't get any Medicare. She gets cancer. Oh, well, tough luck. She's going to have to die. And you mean to tell me that the color of someone's skin or their religious affiliation or whether or not they're an immigrant is more important than that? Life is very cheap to you. And it's very sad that our population is that ignorant. Uh, but then, of course, that's what the Republicans do. They keep you down, they keep you ignorant, they keep you uneducated, and then you don't have a big enough worldview to understand that your thinking is, in fact, self-destructive, and that's unfortunate for you. In international news, Canadian troops have begun to return home from Afghanistan, and that's because Canada's 2,800 troops are mandated by Parliament to return home in 2011. At a flag-lowering ceremony this week, troops officially handed over control of their last district to U.S. forces. Now, the U.S., as you know, plans to withdraw 33,000 troops. That'll happen by the end of 2012, while several other countries, including France, uh, Belgium, and the U.K., have, also have plans to withdraw troops. As of last month, a NATO mission in Afghanistan included about 132,000 troops from 48 countries, the countries with the most troops, the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, France, and Italy. Those are your stories. Thanks for joining us. See you tomorrow, same time, same place, new stories. I'm Carol Angela Davis. Follow me on Twitter, Carol Angela D, at Carol Angela D, and follow me on Facebook, Carol Angela Davis. See you tomorrow. Have a good day.